So this presentation, electrodynamics, uh, seismic forecasting. Um, so just make sure, if you want to learn more about this, Eric has done several presentations a few years ago. There was one um, musical seismograph that we took down in uh, Nevada, and it was the year that Eric was not able to uh, make it up here due to some uh, health complications. And um, if you go to immediatepress.com and you look for musical seismograph, that kind of goes into the Tesla converter that Eric made to amplify these very, very weak signals from these seismographs in a mine that uh, EPD uh, Laboratories has rights to. And there's some other uh, uh, presentations on Alexanderson and so forth that Eric has done that is related to this kind of technology. Um, the advanced seismic warning system, um, everything done up to date has always been done um, with donations. And again, like I mentioned yesterday, uh, just make sure to go to EPD Laboratory or uh, ericpdollar.com and you can click on the donate button. And again, it's a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. All donations are tax deductible, and, and, and whatever you're able to um, help pitch in, either checks, you know, by check or money order through the mail, or if you want to donate anything through PayPal, it helps to kind of keep things going. And I think since last conference, I don't know if, uh, how many people know. But the building is now 100% fully owned outright by EPD Laboratories, Inc., which is kind of a huge step. And that took you know, a big chunk out of the uh, monthly expenses. So um, anything that anybody wants to pitch in to help kind of keep this uh, going definitely helps. So Eric will walk through this. So uh, uh, Eric Dollard, everybody. OK, microphone working. Yep. Okay, we all have heard a lot of stuff about, oh, the USGS and the earthquake prediction. No, we can't do that. That's impossible and no, what have you. But uh, not only is it possible, but it's been done. It's engineerable. There's no reason, legitimate reason, why there can't be a, a worldwide advanced seismic warning system whatsoever other than the human swines, the ones that have presently in the political system made themselves so evident uh, or just in the shutting everything down and controlling and manipulating. So I've got about 30 years of experience in this. And uh, to make it easy, most of this presentation is going to be preform. It's going to be videos of facilities that I built, most of which have been destroyed. Uh, and then some facilities that have been built more recently that presently are just abandoned because there's no real funding to move forward with this project, but at least the facilities are secured and uh, our agreement with the government has been satisfied. They didn't want a bunch of wires and broken poles hanging out in the desert. So I've cleaned up about 15, 20 miles of that and converted it into about five miles of facility. So we'll go through that. This is the alarm system for the gate, and it's seismic also, so it's earth, partially earthquake alarm. Every camera comes out to the master distribution frame. All the wires end here. Every piece of equipment in this rack ends here. So the matrix crosses here, and this is where everything ties in the end of the line. Okay, so we're looking at that Marconi antenna. Here's its radio. Maybe 35 foot width, next to maybe 100 watt transceiver. So this is the main tactical communications radio for, for non-power failure situations. The one in the box is the main tactical radio for power failure conditions. Okay. The seismic stuff all runs on batteries. So the power could be off for a week and it wouldn't phase a lot of this stuff. Okay. Here's when you were tripping and stumbling around the uh, off seismic probe. This is how many counts you picked up, so we can just erase today's counts. <laughs> so let's see now. You were pounding on the ground. I needed this test, okay? Because I don't know what's up or down. 
because the wires get reversed now and then. Okay, so do your pounding on the ground, see the pin jump this way? Yeah. More this way? Yeah. That means then waves going down or this way. Waves going up or this way. Okay, so everything out there ends here. So but you don't have hundred dollars for paper, you just keep using paper over and over until it's so garbled you can't make any sense out of it. So right now this is the active underground signal reception. Okay, again, you can see us fumbling around out there where, you know, we were scraping on the wires and, and that type of stuff. Okay, right now, 2 milli, 0.2 milliamps is zero because I can't run over the past line. This is another year's earthquake history, but I'm out of paper. $10 a roll, I'm out of paper. This was uh, this morning's earthquake. Okay, so the creosote bush. The Mojave Desert, you know, that's this, the main vegetation is creosote bushes. And then we get to the Great Basin where the other, the test site is, then it turns to another type of kind of uh, a sagebrush type of thing. And it's really dead out there. Things don't grow good like they do in the Mojave. Mojave's beautiful. It's amazing how much life there is in a place that's theoretically so dead. It's not dead at all. It's very much life. So the ground rod works against the antenna, so-called antenna elements, and then the receiving equipment is connected at the point at which the two meet. You're saying you went down the taproot? Of, of the yeah. Bush? And do you destroy the bush? Or does it well, no, the bush just grows around it. There's nothing can destroy desert bush. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be, you'll, you'll be out there, and there'll be things that are all dried up and dead, you know, and they... They snag your ropes and they cut your bare feet and they're just dead looking thing. And then all of a sudden there's a big rain event and all that dead stuff comes back to life. And then maybe it's dead, it looks dead again for another 10 years. And then as soon as the conditions are right, all of a sudden everything just pops up out of the ground. So these are the, um, we're doing the tests on the line. Now we got another cross arm replacement. This one was serious. This was a corner pull. All the guys had rusted out because they didn't put strain insulators in the, in the guy wires. The electrolysis ate the ground rods and then the pull yanked forward and ripped the insulators out of the cross arms. And uh, there's about a thousand pounds. No, we have to take up 4,000 pounds load on the dead end guy. And uh, the guy working with me, after we got up to about 3,000 pounds, he got scared and didn't want to pull on the chain fall anymore. But you just got to get there and keep yanking on that thing. But boy, if, it, if something busts loose, man, that whipping cable will just cut you in half like a butcher knife. And studied the various waveforms and what have you, and harmonics, and got some really interesting results. I did one for... Uh, analog of Tesla transformer and one for the analog of the Alexanderson antenna. The Tesla transformer one produced that chirp waveform like the earth signals do where it, the pitch initially starts off high but then the frequency gets lower and lower and uh, and that's why you hear when you hear those things there's that kind of that chirpy ping. It starts off at about 18 kilocycles and then sweeps down lower, the dispersion type of situation. So you can see the spectrum is, is not your normal even harmonic spectrum. You can see that on the top, but the, as we saw in the transformer winding situation, the, the harmonics are no longer integral numbers, but they're more complex. This is the more of the Alexanderson type. The spectrum becomes extremely complicated there's kind of like upper and lower side bands. And what's interesting is if you look at the transcription that I took off of the oscilloscope when I did the experiments and you look at the earth signal on the top, you can see that the analog network representing the Bolinus Alexanderson antenna produces the exact same waveform that's inside the earth. Thank you.